Dr. Katabi, I never thought that I'd be sitting here at the Big Data Conference reflecting back on my undergrad days studying animal behavior, specifically the use of sonar sound waves in bats to locate their prey and navigate through their environment. You spent several years working on a technology that looks like a small router that can be placed in kind of any environment to really help detect people's kind of activity in, in the home environment. So can you talk a little bit more about kind of the inspiration and the inception of thinking about using wireless signals to really understand people's activity at home? Sure. So, um, like my area, uh, that the area that I work in uh, as a professor at MIT is wireless systems and wireless signals. So I came to it from uh, a lot of work that we did on how you use wireless signals to improve Wi-Fi, to improve cellulars, but then at some point you start thinking, wow, these wireless signals are really amazing. They are not just for carrying messages and packets. They also interact with the environment and they get affected by everything, particularly our human bodies. So, I mean, when, when you breathe, for example, it changes the electromagnetic waves around you. Even like the, the small motion of the pulsing of your blood changes the electromagnetic waves. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, using my understanding and the work that I did, like Wi Fi and cellular, then moving to okay, so can we use those signals to understand the environment and to understand, particularly the human body, in a passive way without wearing sensors. Mm -hmm. so, so this is where I came to it, but then once you start working in that area, it's actually fascinating. Like just one invention and one innovation leads to the next. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first kind of use cases that, that you and your team thought of was detecting falls in patients that have kind of a high fall yeah. risk. And can you talk a little bit more about kind of that technology and how you see that interfacing with kind of care provider teams that are remotely monitoring these high-risk patients? Yeah, so, so indeed when we started, the first application was can we use wireless signals so that we can passively detect falls without asking people to, to have a pendant or push a button or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can, uh, so the way we, we designed it is uh, the wireless signals, the device is like a Wi-Fi like router that sits in the background of the home mm -hmm. and can monitor the falls using, using just by analyzing the wireless signal in the environment. Mm -hmm. And then if it detects a fall, it can convey that information to the caregiver via text, email, or phone call. Mm -hmm. And that caregiver can be programmed like just like like my mom, for example, might say, oh, my caregiver is my daughter, or someone may say, uh, like whoever they indicate as the person that they want to communicate that information to. Mm -hmm. Now, you touched upon this a little bit before, but when you think about such a kind of foundational technology as an inventor, there are so many potential use cases. So you talked about one in healthcare, but you know, as you guys move towards monitoring vital signs and mm -hmm. other kind of metrics, in every single field you can think of a lot of use cases. So how do you think about you know, which ones to address and tackle first um, in, in, a, in a time when you can have so many different ideas about potential applications? Yeah, so actually that was a problem when uh, we were looking at uh, commercializing the technology and thinking about all of the various segments where this technology applies and it's like a candy store and you have like all of these possibilities. Exactly. Yeah. But um, we, uh, we picked healthcare for two reasons. On one hand, because um, the gap between what the technology can provide and what is available now is the biggest. Mm -hmm and uh, healthcare is really in need of a transformation. It's just like you can't sustain the cost that exists today. Something has to happen. And um, being able to monitor people continuously and passively monitor their physiological signals at home is something that can change and transform the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing that's important. The other thing is just like I'm really, like the, the personal interest of the team so we are all passionate about changing healthcare. Mm -hmm. Great. And and are you ever? Do you ever get concerned that perhaps the technology that you're working on developing is maybe a bit too innovative for our society at this time, and that you may you may hear from people that they might be 
uh, reluctant or hesitant to have such personalized data being captured passively um, from them about their activity. So I don't think it's about too innovative or not innovative. I think I mean what you are referring to is an issue that is very important, which is privacy. Like, I want my personal information, particularly my health information, to be um, controlled by me. I want to have that and decide who I share it with and in what context. And that is a decision both of um, like us, the people who are developing the technology, and is a societal also decision. And I, I do personally believe that the user is the one who owns the the data, they can decide to share it and you can incentivize them to use the data for the, for helping to develop new drugs and uh, evolve medicine. But at the end of the day, it's their own data. Right. And it's up to us as a society to regulate any new technology in good and, and bad ways. Of course. But at the same time, regulate it in a wise way that would not stifle innovations. Yes. And, and currently, as it stands right now, are you using the, the technology with, with people and, and patients, or, or do you still have more validation studies that you're, you're working on? Yeah, so we, uh, we are actually using the technology with people and with patients. And uh, some of, like, for example, we have a, um, a project with the Michael J. Fox Foundation in Parkinson. We have others in other therapeutic areas. Um, and the technology is very interesting in this, particularly in uh, when it comes to diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and diseases for which there are no uh, uh, good biomarkers today. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your insights about the work, and we're looking forward to hearing more about you know the technology and all your progress on this interesting journey. Thank you. Thank you.